Hello everyone, how are you all? In this video, we will do the remaining school of thoughts in psychology. Those are listed below. Let's begin with the unionistic psychology. This school of thought holds belief that all people have the potential for goodness. This school of thought looks at the individual or anything as a whole, rather than dividing it in its subparts. It believes that one thing makes sense when it's complete and not divided. Humanistic psychology stresses on free will, self-efficacy, or self-actualization. Rather than solely focusing on internal thoughts and desires, humanistic psychology also credits the environmental influence on our experiences and behavior. Humanistic psychology also contributes to influence our education, healthcare, and other areas as well. Humanistic psychology focuses on the uniqueness of human beings. Humanistic philosophy and values reflect belief in human dignity and science but not religion. Humanistic school of thought believe in the dignity of human and they believe science is a way that people can achieve their greatest potential. Two of the leading humanistic theorists who have made advancements in the field of personality psychology were Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers. Here is a picture of both of them Carl Rogers versus Abraham Maslow. First we would talk about Abraham Maslow. He basically have given us a hierarchy of five for a human being to survive, have some basic needs. Let's talk about them. The hierarchy starts from the very last need, that is physiological needs. These include food, water, warmth, rest and all of the basic needs that are needed for an individual to survive. One is basic needs for air, water, food are met now the individual needs safety. So in the hierarchy the second need is for the need of safety which is the need for security and safely. The physiological and safety both are basic needs. Belongingness are love needs and self-esteem needs both are the psychological needs of human beings which comes after the physiological needs. Once these both needs are met people move towards belongingness and love needs. That is the third stage of hierarchy here people want to intimate relationships and to make friends and engage with others and form close relationships. After the third stage people move towards the need of esteem which includes feelings of prestige and accomplishments here. People want to get praise and get awards and become well renowned. Then comes the last need, that is the need for self-actualization. It is on the top of hierarchy. Here achieving one's full potential including creative activities. Self-actualization only comes when all of the needs mentioned below are completely met. Here people find the peace of their life as it is the self-fulfillment need. Maslow believes that human lives consist of this hierarchy as they first try to get done with the basic needs which are physiological and safety needs. Once these both needs are made they move towards the psychological needs which are belongingness and self-esteem and if all of these are met the person tries to move to self-actualization. Now let's talk about Carl Rogers. He was the humanistic psychologist who agreed with the main assumption of Abraham Maslow. Rogers also believed that every person could achieve their goals, wishes and desires in the life when or rather if they did so, self-actualization occurs. Carl Rogers gave client-centered or person-centered therapy. According to Rogers there are three core conditions that must be met in therapy, let's discuss them. The three core conditions are empathy, conquerence and unconditional positive regard. First is unconditional positive regard which says that you must accept your client without any conditions. For instance if the client is black you must not set conditions and do discrimination that I will only deal with white patients or clients. You have to accept them as they are, regardless of gender, race, religion. Secondly empathy. Empathy is the ability to relate with the patient or client's emotions and thoughts, it is a part of therapy and is necessary for building a strong therapeutic relationship with the client. Here you have to understand the client from their perspective and try to realize things from their point of view as well. Now the last part which is congruence this part is also called as genuineness, you don't need to be fake here you have to be genuine to the person sitting in front of you which is the patient or client. Gestalt psychology. This school of thought was given by a Max Wertheimer, Kurt Kafka and Kohler. Gestalt psychology is a school of thought in psychology that focus on how people perceive and experience things as a whole and it believes that whole is greater than its parts. This approach to psychology began in 19th century in Germany and Australia, in response to the molecular approach of structuralism. In this approach, instead of breaking down thoughts and behavior to smallest elements, Gestalt psychologists believed that you must look at the whole of experience as the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. For instance let's see an example of a tree. If you look on a leaf or a trunk, or the roots in the picture it would be slightly difficult to understand this. But if the whole picture of tree is shown to you you can easily recognize it's a tree. 
hence that the whole is greater than sum of its parts. Gestalt psychology believes that human has an inner disposition in certain patterns based on how the mind perceives something therefore there are certain principles here you can see. Proximity, similarity, figured ground, continuity, closure etc. The first one is figure grounded perception. It refers to the tendency a visual system to simplify seen into main object that we are looking at which is called figure and everything else that forms the background is called ground. Therefore it is named as figure ground perception. Here I will wait for 5 seconds and a picture showing to you. And you have to think what can you see here. Here, there are two images in one. One is base and the ground figure is two humans. Let's see another picture. So in this picture the figure is tree while ground is a lion and a monkey. Law of similarity. Items that are similar are grouped together. Although elements are on spaces even if in different columns but if same we tend to group them together by their colors. Law of continuity. Lines or seams is following smooth paths. Without breaking lines in multiples. We see lines as a part of continuous movement. In this picture we perceive two overlapping wavy lines rather than three shapes linked. Hence we can recognize lines following paths. Law of proximity. Elements or objects placed closer with one another are perceived as belonging together. Hence close objects makes their groups. Law of closure. This law states that when we see incomplete elements, our brains fill the gaps and perceive the elements as a whole. Here in the picture our mind can fill the gaps and perceive in the picture as a panda. In this picture our mind can fill gaps and perceive it as a ball. Here comes the last school of thought that is cognitive psychology, or cognitive school of thought. It is considered as the best school of thought in psychology, as tells a lot about the functionality of mind, acquired skills and many mental processes. Some are mentioned here as analyzing, evaluation, creating, application, learning and remembering, but also includes many others. Ulrich Nieser is considered as the father of the cognitive school of thought. Hence this school of thought focuses on representation and how do people process information. In short, cognitive school of thought talks about all the mental functions and representations. Major theory given in this branch and school of thought is given by Jean Piaget, that is cognitive stages of development. He have described all the stages from childhood to adulthood. Finally, we are done with the major school of thoughts in psychology. Please do like subscribe and share. We will meet soon with the next video. Till then take a good care of yourself and your family.